Good evening and welcome to the Conservation Commission meeting of October 21, 2021. Um, meeting is normally held at the municipal offices that are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March, 22, March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A, section 20. Um, there are uh, <clears throat> the meetings called to order at uh, 7 p.m. and I will do a roll call now of the commission members present. Tim Hilchey present. Bill Mara PC present. Pete Law present. Excellent. And um, <clears throat> did everyone receive the copy of Bill's minutes from the previous meeting and have a chance to review them? Tim, Bill Mayer, Pete PC. Law, I did. Yes. Yeah. Did you see anything that anyone felt needed to be revised or could I entertain a motion to accept as written? Uh, I would, uh, this is Pete Law. I would make a motion to accept the uh, minutes from the September 23rd, 2021 meeting um, as written. I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Bill Mayer, PC, aye. Pete Law, aye. Excellent. Um, next item on the agenda is review mail, but I, I know that a couple of people here are facing deadlines to get to another meeting. So let's move that to the end of the, end of the agenda. And um, we will uh, quickly pick up with the RDA for Greenfield Road, Berkshire Gas. And then I'd like to follow that up with, um, with Sandra uh, Cameron from the Connecticut Rail Trail, the uh, mass, I'm not certain, certain which organization she's representing tonight, but um, so Mr. Scarpa, can you share a little information about uh, the project and do you need anyone to show any drawings for you? No, I believe I uh, met with uh, you, Tim, and uh, Pete um, a couple of weeks ago, and we reviewed the projects that we have proposed. The, the, the major one is uh, basically from Old Main Street south to uh, the William Sugar Shack, where we're going to be relocating our six-inch gas main that is currently in the wetlands. Um, we're going to be relocating that outside <clears throat> and into uh, Route 5 and 10 there, Greenfield Road. That's the, uh, the major project that we're looking at doing for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, there's a couple services attached to that at 494 and 500 Greenfield Road that have uh, buried regulators. And the DPU has uh, kind of given us uh, a uh, consent decree to take those buried regulators out of service that are within our service areas. And that includes not only Deerfield, but Waitley, um, Hatfield, uh, Greenfield, and a, a, a handful of towns over here in Berkshire County also. <clears throat> this was a uh, design method back in the 70s that um, basically uh, took the high pressure gas that's in the gas main and knock the pressure down um, to feed to the individual houses. I think at the time, what the thinking was, was uh, that having lower pressure gas up against the houses, uh, it would be a good thing. However, uh, I don't think they took into account the fact that they were burying these regulators uh, just off the main, which could, in theory, cause some problems in the future if, if these things ever over, overpressurized. So the, the design theory now is to run the gas services with high pressure right up to the buildings, make sure all those meters are outside and regulate it right before the meter with uh, various regulators that we have, um, depending on what the gas load is. Um, most of the residential um, gas services are they use a B35 regulator from uh, Schlumberger or um, 
Fisher. And that's what we do at this point. And that's one of the reasons that we're uh, doing a lot of this work. Um, there's other individual services throughout Greenfield Road that basically the same conditions hold. We're eliminating the buried regulators and we're either uh, installing brand new services, full services, or tying them over to the new main and bypassing the buried regulators. And then we're going to retire those existing gas services right at the main. So those buried regs are going to be either totally out of service or removed, depending on how close they are to, um, to the excavation. So as you probably all know, uh, there's various wetlands areas uh, along Greenfield Road that we're going to be excavating near. Um, all of our work is in the buffer zone. We're not gonna be in any of the wetlands. Um, so as a, in our meeting uh, on site, <clears throat> one of the recommendations was to extend the silt fence and wattles uh, right up to the edge of the road so that we prevent any erosion uh, from happening, um, you know, even just off the road. And in this particular case, that the plan that's up there now is to uh, install wattles and silt fence all the way from Old Main Street along the edge of the road uh, in front of the guardrail where, where they'll probably be installed all the way down to the end of um, the end of the uh, excavation and installation down there at detail A where the cursor is right now. Pete or, or Bill, do you have any questions about this? For uh, this, is, this is Pete Law, just a quick comment. Um, yeah, I appreciate the the new drawings that you sent in. We're bringing up the barriers right to uh, the side of the highways because there is quite a bit of drop off in some of those areas. So um, that was definitely an improvement to the plans. So, um, uh, you know, that that's good. Uh, um, thank you for that. And I, I looked them over and I think they, they meet the criteria that we discussed. So, yeah, thank you. And uh, as Bill Mayor, Bill Mayor PC, I just want to uh, thank you for your comprehensive review. Um, I don't have uh, other comments at this time. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop sharing at the moment. Um, Paul, you were in your um, in your filing. What were you looking for us uh, for determination? Uh, I think, uh, and I can't remember how they're set up, to be honest with you now, but I think a negative determination is it uh, item number three um, that uh, I don't have it right here in front of me, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But basically, I, I was looking for the commission to, you know, grant, uh, grant us approval for doing the work as with the mitigating measures that we've uh, outlined. Um. Okay, well, um, yeah, I, I think that that's probably the correct, the correct um, determination. So, um, Pete, uh, you have uh, this is Pete Login. Um, just a quick question: When the RDA was submitted, it had the previous plans. Are we voting this evening on the RDA with the updated plans? So that. Uh, just want to make sure that's clear because it, it did change some of the uh, the length and positioning of the barriers. Um, yeah, I believe that uh, that's what we would we would want a motion to say that, okay. uh, based on the revised plans for um, erosion controls. Yeah, if you want to note my email, the date of my my email when I sent the revised plans as part of the conditions, you know, uh, based on design plan submitted or resubmitted on, um, I think it was the first part of October, whatever that date was, um, that that probably might be a way to, you know, make sure that the, the, the revised plans are the ones we're working off of. Yeah, I was, I was just looking for that date myself. Thank you. It was um, October 12th um, was when you sent the revised plans. Okay. So that's a, that's a good way to address that in the motion. Um, 
Pete, are you comfortable trying to make a motion? Uh, yeah, this is Pete Law. I'll uh, attempt a motion here that uh, we approve a negative three finding of the RDA, um, which includes the October 2nd updates to 12. the, oh, sorry, I missed, yeah. October 12th updates to, to the plans for um, the erosion control measures. Um, since I was out at the site visit and uh, have reviewed the plans too, I'll second that. Most has been made in second. Is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, uh, I will um, call the question, uh, Pete Law. Uh, yay. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Marapisi? Yes. Tim Hilchey, yes. So um, we'll have that recorded uh, with Sue and it should be available um, early next week. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Scarpa. Very good. Have a good night. Thank you very much. All right, you take care. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Oh, uh, one, one last question. Do you want us, as we, as we get going on this, and I, I think I mentioned this to you at our meeting, the, the, the bigger project probably won't go until next spring because of uh, gas supply and so forth. But once we get the silt fence up for these individual jobs, do you want us to give you a call so you can come up and take a look at it? Or how do you want us to work with that? Yes, I mean, as we, as we discussed at the um, site visit, uh, yeah, if you could give us a, basically a 48 hour before you're gonna start the work so that we can uh, just check the erosion controls to see if they're compliant with the, I'm sure they will be but compliant with the uh, drawings. That would be appreciated. Even, okay. Even sure. though you're going to do the main thing next year. Yeah. Should I do that contact through Sue? Yes, please. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thanks. All right. Um, if, if no one objects, I'd just like to uh, have um, Sandra Cameron, who's um, got a small, she sent us a, a letter to Sue, and I hope that Sue forwarded it to you about some some uh, painting work that uh, this group wants to do um, along the Connecticut Rail Trail. So if you could uh, just briefly discuss uh, you know who you're representing and um, what you're what you're hoping to to do, um, Sandra Sandy. I'd be more than happy to. Um, my name is Sandra Cameron. I'm the supervisor for Connecticut River Greenway. We are a Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation Park. And part of my um, park that I oversee is the Canal Side Rail Trail. The area that we're discussing is where it crosses the Connecticut River. Um, if you're headed from the Deerfield train yard, and going across to where the uh, sewage treatment plant is. There's a bridge that crosses the river there. And what we would like to do is using acrylic stain, we would like to stain the side rails on the bridge, not the metal superstructure, simply the wooden rails that go along um, by the tread. We're not doing anything with the tread. We're not doing anything on the exterior only what painters could reach standing on the bridge itself, um, the wooden pieces. And this is just to help the wood um, last a little bit longer. So in my conversation with you, um, the way you explained it to me is this, this is a wooden structure that's built on top of a metal bridge that's pre-existing. Yes. Is that a correct representation? Yes, it is. And... Um, your question to us was whether whether we would require any permitting for you to do this work. Is that correct? Correct. Um, half of the bridge is half of the bridge is under De Deerfield. Um, as my understanding, the town line goes right through the center of the river. 
Mm-hmm. So I've already been in contact with Montague, and now I'm contacting you for your half of the bridge. And Bill Mayor of and Pete Law, did you get the email trail on this? Ms. P. Law, I'm afraid I did not. It doesn't, I don't, I was looking, but I do not believe so. And okay. uh, Tim, Bill Mayor of PC, I did not receive it at all. So okay, well, I'm not sure, we don't have an RDA that we're considering. No. Either. And let me just uh, quickly, I'm going to forward what I, what I have to you both now. Um, and I apologize for not having this. I, I thought that Sue had sent it along, but um, apparently not. So I, I reached out to, um, or Mark Stinson reached out to, uh, oh, I, turns out I did, I asked Mark what his thoughts were on this. And so I'll read from the email that he says, he doesn't see any quote, remove, fill, dredge or alter um, by painting, but what would they be painting? And um, he said, if they're, if, they're, um, if they're not scraping or anything that, uh, there would be nothing falling into the river. So um, he said it's up to us to decide whether we feel an RDA is, is necessary. Um, is my understanding from the discussions and I had, I'd ask, um, I, maybe she didn't receive this, but I asked um, Ms. Cameron to, if she had any photographs of the, the area to send us because that would have helped us in our discussions, but um, I guess that uh, you may may not have those available, but my understanding is that there's a metal there's a metal bridge, and then this was built on top of it, and um, it doesn't sound like it's going to involve any anything that's going to drop into or outside of the containment of the bridge. So, um, if you don't mind, uh, would you tell us what your response from Montague was, Ms. Cameron? They are not. Re- they are not requiring anything. Um, I, I've spoken to, I'm planning on doing the bridge, um, Deerfield Montague Bridge, and also the Hadley Northampton Bridge. And I've heard from Montague, they're not requiring anything. Northampton is not requiring anything. Um, Hadley, I'm still waiting for a response. This is all going to be happening next year. I have to put it into a request with our paint crew that comes out and does painting. Um, they do everything with brush and roller. They don't do anything with any spray, um, which had been one of the questions that that was asked by Northampton. So I don't know if that makes any difference or not, but it's an old railroad bridge. So the bridge itself um, is like any other railroad bridge you might see across the river, except now instead of having um, open ties that allow things to drop into the river, now it's a, a wooden platform, and it has railings on the side that have uh, three tiers plus a top cap. So we would be doing anything that we could reach, and we would not be reaching outside of the metal superstructure. Same to this, Pete Law, just two quick questions. So there'd be no... Um... No, no scraping, no preparation of the area that you're going to paint. No and scraping. It's a, no scraping, and it's a uh, an acrylic stain, so it's a um, the water based I mean, just product. A water based, okay. Well, thank you. I was looking for that water based. Thank you, and it would just blend into the the coloration would just blend into the uh, natural surrounding type of view. We use a, a brown called wood chip, and it's a, it's a dark brown stain. Okay, thank you. Yeah, well, one of my questions was going to be uh, whether it was going to be a, a water-based stain in preference to paint, which in the future would probably cause peeling and so forth. So thanks for clarifying that. Not Bill, do you have any thoughts on this? Tim, Ms. Bill Mayor of PC, I, I really do think that, that we should um, uh, go by the way of the other towns have decided and, uh, and not require an RDA um, for this work. Uh, that's my view. So if we could move on to the RDAs that are 
on our agenda for tonight. Okay. Um, Pete, do you have a similar feeling? Yeah, this is Pete Law. I, I, I would agree. I don't think it's um, something we have to pursue any, any further. It sounds like a good work and out. Tim Hilchey, I agree with uh, both Bill and Pete's view. And so, uh, Ms. Cameron, you can proceed with the work um, without needing to file an RDA with us. And I would ask that that um, come to me via email. Yeah, I'll have them. Um, so that I can put. Yeah, I'll have Sue Brulot communicate with you. Um, probably, she. I think she's out of the office tomorrow, but we'll make sure it happens. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. All right. The next item on the agenda is um, an RDA for um, proposed uh, marijuana facility off Greenfield Road. And um, is there anyone from? Is it? Are you, Mr. Squire? Are you representing this? No, I'm here for the River Road. Um, okay, very good. So, yeah. um, I'm not sure. Um, what's happened with this um, Pete Law and I went out there um, with Ken Bukion um, or Bukalon, I'm not sure how he pronounces it, he Americanizes it, I'm trying to pronounce it like a French person um, and uh, <clears throat> looked at the two, two areas he wanted to um, cross the land for um, to do some drilling. And he mentioned that he would be here tonight. So um, how do we want to proceed? Do we want to um, move on to some other business to give him a couple of minutes to appear? Otherwise, you know, do we want to delay action on this or how do we want to proceed? Uh, Tim, it's Bill Mayer, PC. Um, I mean, I, I, I think that the it's the applicant's responsibility to be here to present. Uh, so um, uh, I, I would make a motion that we uh, continue uh, until our next scheduled meeting. How do you feel about that, Pete? Uh, is Pete Law? I would agree. Um, there's some questions, so I would second that motion. Okay, so um, then let's uh, continue this uh, with the understanding that the applicant ap appears before we complete our, our actions for this evening that, uh, that we will um, allow them the opportunity to speak. Does that seem reasonable? Tim, Bill Mayor of PC, can you say that again? Because that's different from my motion. Yeah, I'm actually. just saying I agree, but um, if the applicant shows up at 7, 30 and we're still working, um, will we give them the opportunity to speak or, or are we just gonna close this down for this meeting? Well, I think we have to vote on the motion okay. that's, been, uh, that's been made uh, prior to such. Would you accept an amendment to this motion that gives them the uh, opportunity to? Uh, yes, I would accept a, a motion, an amendment to the motion. So I would just like to amend the motion to say that if the applicant appears before the uh, end of business tonight that will give them the opportunity to um, address us. Otherwise we'll delay action until the next meeting. And I'll second that. All right, um, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, Tim Hilchey, aye. Bill Mayer, P C I. Thank you. Okay, so um, since we have another person on, um, we can deal with the emergency certs afterwards and let's uh, talk with Mr. Squire um, about the, the, this item under old business, 264 River Road culvert. Yeah. Do you have um, any, any pictures that you can share with us? I, I absolutely do, yeah. So I was gonna ask if I could have screen sharing um, capabilities and I can do that. So this was a project um, that we assisted with a driveway permit. We didn't necessarily file the notice of intent. Um, we did some of the survey. Um, I'm sorry, I'm Jeff Squire with the Berkshire Design Group. 
um, assisting uh, Natalie Blaise and, and um, Luke Bassard for their single family home parcel on 261, uh, 261 River Road. Um, and so just real quickly, this is River Road here. Um, let me back out a little bit. You can see the Connecticut River off to the east. Um, the, these parcels have changed a little bit. We prepared an ANR uh, last year that subdivided these properties a little differently. So there's now a property line um, between these two and this, this parcel here leading up into the larger parcel is now all part of um, a, you know, what, what they are building. Um, if everybody can see, hopefully this PDF. Um, oops, no, I'm sorry. So here's, here's again, uh, River Road. Um, and then this is the larger parcel with their uh, single family home that they're constructing. Um, there was an existing farm road that went up here. They, um, they got an order of conditions um, that stock um, had prepared for just approving this driveway to, to make it uh, accessible and uh, meet fire safety standards. And so what we are looking at now um, actually, I was out there um, last week and looked at the driveway and actually it's it's held up remarkably well um, over the summer, given some of the torrential downpours we've had. So um, I was really happy to see the way it, um, the way it's held up. One of the things that we've noticed is just there's a lot of runoff from this hillside here. Um, if I can let's see what else have I got here. Um, So you can see their, their house is up in this location. This is looking south, River Road you know, is, is on the left side of this, uh, this image. Um, their driveway comes in, skirts collapse broke, and then climbs up to this hillside up here. But there's a lot of runoff just from sheet flow that comes down and sort of collects in the corner of, um, of where the driveway is proposed. So all we're looking for is to install a small culvert um, So the driveway comes down to River Road. Here's Flat Brook on this side. There's a small, um, you know, uh, uh, BBW off of that in a, a lower elevation. But this driveway extends this way. So we're looking to install a culvert driveway and then one down here to help deal with some of that runoff that collects in this low point. Um, I wanted to ask you permission to do that under the current uh, conditions. It doesn't change any of the drainage, any of the improvements or other, other um, you know, erosion control measures that have been in place for this project for restoration. So <clears throat> that's the request. Um, Mr. Squire, can you describe what is the culvert going to be? Is it like an eight inch pipe? Is it a 12 inch pipe? What is it? I imagine it's, so the grade drops off actually quite a bit in this, this little clearing area here. Um, there's an area this, you know, that we were that's slated to be, um, you know, loamed and seeded and um, in accordance with the order of conditions. Um, so there is space to um, excavate out, you know, a small depression here to get enough for a 12 inch culvert under there. I think both of these would be 12 inch culverts because of the elevation that we've got, you know, available and certainly for, you know, just for overall capacity. And what effect, if any, would this have in changing the natural runoff from this area into these, these uh, resource areas? So I think the only thing that changes is that right now, you know, what would happen without these culverts is, um, you know, in this area here particularly is where most of the water collects is what would happen in some of these larger storms. It would overtop the, the driveway and a road you know, it would find some natural path to erode that driveway to get into this area. And with with the culverts, we're able to help control that a little bit in that we can create a small depression on, you know, on one end and same at the other end to allow water to get through and pass under the driveway and then get back to this, to the natural grades on this side without, you know, eroding the gravel in the driveway. I don't suspect it would, you know, this 
the, the outlet end would, um, you know, would be a level stone, you know, reinforced pad. So it's not going to erode beyond that point. Um, and given the grades that are there now, I don't anticipate that it would, you know, I actually think it would help um, by directing the, the, the runoff um, that collects in a particular location rather than just letting it find its natural course. you know similar down here there is there's a hillside that um you know extends off to the right here there's a small um you know a swale in this location right at the toe of the slope so there is a lot that a lot of water that collects off of this field and sort of runs down along this slope and you know what we've noticed is it's, it, it eventually finds its way across the driveway and back down under this culvert where it goes now um it's 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 really just started to a road away at the driveway a little bit so there's an opportunity now um you know before the before the season closes to to install these to help control that a little bit and um it, again it doesn't change the drainage or the watersheds at all or put the water in different locations it's merely just to help control um you know those those major events Uh, this is Pete Law. Uh, Jeff, could you tell me where Clap Pond is on this schematic? Uh, so Clap Brook is, you know, is is this? The, the here? brook, right? It's yeah. here. Okay. So that's that's the what I guess the northern high water line in this in this the plans oriented, obviously. So the. You are changing the water flow a little bit because you're channelizing it into more of a point situation than a wider range um, across. Because I, you know, you said it went over the road. It looked like it might come down to the northern side of the right about where the property boundary is and come out that way down to river and across. Um, but do you have you done any thoughts about that channelization? How much water? and materials that'll come through it that would then be impacted over to the to the brook um yeah you know it's it's funny that so the this this area in particular has been an area that um you know it's it's a really sandy deposit it i'm sure it's a a result of you know old farm activity that um yeah um and just you know deposits next to the to the brook um but there's a natural contour, an actual high point, you know, that sort of wanders around this this sort of BBW. Um, so if you follow my cursor, there's sort of a you know a high point in there. So there's there's actually a little low point in there, a little basin that was intended to collect a lot of this runoff, you know, from the driveway and the hillside to begin with. You know, we anticipated yeah. that that was part of the you know the original plan. Um, you know, I think what we have noticed is that just given now that this has been graded to a more even grade and doesn't have, you know, some of the dips and, um, you know, undulations that the previous farm road has had that, you know, that the water just collects in, in that, you know, existing low point back here and just, you know, pops over and just starts to erode away and create runnels in the driveway. Yeah. And so the hope was that, you know, at least we could collect that a low point under the driveway, get it to the other side, you know, let it come out and still get into that same low point. Um, I think I think there's a fair amount of you know room and capacity for for water to disperse and return to sheep flow in, in that location. I I'm, I'm not too concerned about um, you know and, and again just and just looking at the overall condition of the driveway, you know, all up and down the road. Um, given the, some of the storm events that we've had, especially early in the year, um, you know, I'm, I'm amazed that it looks as well as it does, and there is. You know, they've got erosion control along its entire edge, you know, all the way down through. And, you know, you really don't see anything anywhere jumping over that fence line um, toward the brook. So, um, you know, I was I was a little nervous the, the first site visit out there, but I was I was pleasantly surprised. So, I'm, yeah, so I'm, I'm not too concerned that that, um, you know, creating, quote unquote, a point source is, is going to make a huge impact on, on that location. Yeah, it's hard to tell without contour lines and the elevation lines here. Um, yeah. I do notice this going by on river road that the lower part of the fence line the the, uh, the erosion control so it's, it's getting pretty packed it's it's pretty full down there there's been a lot of material that have come down through into that 
lower part of River Road. I haven't gone up through the uh, the whole area, but th mm. there's quite a quite a, a run of water coming down through that area that's picking up a lot of material. Now, is the road elevated off as you've done it, uh, as you've developed the driveway, or is it just horizontal it's with the with the the rest of the uh, um, topography there? No, I mean they they it you know it's slightly elevated now. They they've excavated out some of the topsoil and some of the organics at the top and replaced that with you know suitable, um, but it's within you know several inches of of existing grade. Um, and again, I think you know I think what you're seeing really down along River Road is probably just the result of a lot of that you know driveway gravel and sediment washing down and out of, out of the driveway. So this was a you know hopefully a way to help control that and avoid that from you know continuing to happen in the future. Right, but you come across a culvert and then it'd be deposited on the south side of that lower culvert. Sure, and I, yeah, and I, I suspect a lot of that sediment may be from the, from the gravel in the driveway itself. And I guess that's sort of where I was going as I was trying to, you know, maybe not, but. Well, the first, the, my observation, Kim, Hil Kim Hilchi, is that the, the, first, uh, the first culvert seems to seems to go across to an area that we had already seen and discussed as being an area where water was going to naturally collect and sink into the ground and um, in a, in big storm events. Um, but the lower one seems, you know, to be perhaps more, more of a problem in the sense that is the, is the green area that we're seeing, is that, is that slope or is that BVW or is, so the green is really just to highlight existing tree line or tree line. Okay. BVW doesn't start, you know, is, is the obviously the bluer edge with a WF mm -hmm. flag. Okay. And what is the what is the uh, slope in the tree tree area? Is it does it fall off at the backside or is it sort of fall off throughout the whole area? It it falls off really throughout this whole tree line area down to sort of this level, you know, more level, um, you know, BVW area that's perched slightly above, you know, where the mean high water is. So it's, it's sort of this natural, you know, plateau at a lower elevation. It's, I would guess it's, you know, maybe eight, six to eight feet lower in grade. There, there is a guardrail along this edge where this culvert is. So, you know, there is a drop from, from this down to, you know, down to where the, um, where the stream is. Now, just for clarification for everyone, I'm, again, I'm not sure if all of this email trail was shared with you. You were asking whether you could do this work under the existing notice of intent or whether you would need to do some additional filings. So that's really right. what we're discussing as much as discussing where these culverts are <coughs> proposed. <coughs> right. So... So Tim, uh, Bill Mayor PC, may I um, yes. make a recommendation? Um, you know, and so we, we have uh, provided a site visit uh, to this property. Um, and I think the questions that are being asked uh, are making me feel uh, strong enough that I, I believe that uh, this needs to be a separate filing. Um, that I, I don't believe this culvert could be just com combined with what we've already agreed. Okay, then P. Law, what's your thinking on this? Yeah, this is Pete Law. Um, I, I, I think I, I do agree with Bill on that aspect because I'm a little concerned on the bottom, just seeing some of it and, and the channeling coming across there, even on the upper one. Um, I don't know if another site visit would help answer some of those questions, if we could go out and see exactly what it looks like. But I, without having the um, NOI right in front of me, uh, I'm not sure if I can just go ahead and tack it on without uh, taking another look and a little bit more consideration. Um, just lack of information. I, I didn't review this before. I had, had a chance to review this before. Okay. 
And before we make a motion on this, I think um, I'll give you my thoughts as well. This is Tim Hilchey. Um, I, I agree that um, I think a site visit would be in order and <clears throat> I don't feel that we necessarily need to decide tonight whether there's a way we can incorporate whatever they're proposing under the existing NOI with some amendment uh, language or if we need to have them do something separate. Um, so I would suggest perhaps that we schedule a site visit before the next meeting. And um, when did you hope to do this work? Well, so I guess get, um, just I'll say two things. Um, you know, one of the reasons for trying to get this wrapped up, um, and answer, direct answer to your question was so that they could get everything seated and stabilized, you know, as soon as possible. You know, or, you know, obviously the season's closing in, so they'd like to get this wrapped up. And if there's a little bit more work that they need to do, you know, associated with this, they'd like to get that in, you know, sooner rather than later and, um, um, you know, get the site stabilized. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know if I have a direct answer, although the site equipment is out there and they'd like to, you know, deal with it. The other is um, insofar as another filing or, or um, an amendment, um, I'm happy to make a site visit out there and meet everybody out there. I'm sure Natalie and, and Luke would be, you know, would more than happy to um, entertain that as well. Um, from what I understand, and again, I'm not, I'm certainly not the, the authority, but um, from what I understand, there can't be another, another order of conditions or another permit filed for a very similar project on the same property. You know, if they were distinctly different projects, they could be two separate permits. Um, I've gone, I've just, and the only reason I say that is because I've dealt with this in a couple of projects recently in a couple of other towns that, you know, they won't, the DEP won't issue another file number for, you know, a, a very similar, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, project or, or add on to an existing, you know, order of conditions. Um, if it was distinctly different, you could. So what, what we've had to do is amend, you know, existing orders. So we can certainly, you know, talk about that process, but that's just something that I wanted to offer from experience on a couple of other projects, very similar to this with, you know, respect to amendments or new, new, um, new permit requirements. So, mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I'm happy to meet out there. I've got, yeah, got some availability. So, um, let me know. Well, my, um, I was just going to say that my situation is I'm going to be away for the next two weeks, but um, other people, other commissioners will be here. Um, and I wondered if Emily Stockman, who did the uh, delineations and so forth, you could reach out to her and ask her to opine on what the effects of this would be um, so that we would have, you know, a professional opinion about what what directing the water in these two locations would do to the resource area. Does that seem like a reasonable thing for you to do? Sure, I can certainly reach out to, to Natalie and Luke tomorrow and just see if that's something that they'd be willing to, you know, reach out again. I can't direct Emily to, you know, right. to do that on their behalf, but I'm happy to, you know, make that connection and, and that request, so sure. Pete, you're thinking, I can see you thinking. What are you thinking? Uh, no, I, I think um, if Emily could uh, provide some insight, that'd be great. Uh, this Pete Law, um, and, and I and I, I'm trying to remember the the, the site walk in the area, but um, I do I do think the the chan the two culverts and the channeling of the shear water into the specific areas and what's going to come down through there. It, it, it's somewhat of a significant change to what we reviewed um, from the from the initial um, request. Um, there, there could be a lot of stuff settled into a certain area. Um, you can see a lot of material already ended up in the bottom. Uh, so I, I think it it does whether we amend or um, however we do it. But I, I think there's some significance to taking a look at it again because it's uh, it's channeling a lot of water into a, a given spot and you know is a who's you know it's a private road who's maintaining the culvert uh, what happens to the sediments when they get to the backside how long do they stay there uh, where do they go uh, you know, there's there's some other issues it's a lot of material and even though on the map it looks like the brook is a ways away that brook, it's come down as a hill pretty quickly. There's a lot of flow there. It'll pick up that stuff. It'll, it'll move it along. 
Um, so there could be some some more impacts um, than in a different type of topography. So those that's what I'm thinking, uh, Tim. I just like to see it again if we can have that chance uh, uh, with Jeff and whoever the team might be. It'd be a, easier to make an assessment once you kind of walk the land and take a look. And um, Tim Hilchie again, just to follow up, I agree with your your view of that, Pete. And I wonder if in your discussion with Natalie and, and Luke um, about having Emily, um, you know, give us the benefit of her professional experience um, that you ask her as well, is there an alternative to the, particularly the lower culvert? Um, and if so, what is it? And you're an, you're an engineer probably, so you, site design is your specialty. So is there an alternative to that lower is there a way to move the water a different direction or yeah. um, so the sediment's not going to go into the, the brook and into the, the BBW and um, assuming the sediment's going to stop being an issue after a certain amount of time. Right. But um, so those are questions that I would have. And Bill, do you have any other thoughts? Hi, Tim. Bill Mayer, PC. Uh, I don't uh, have other thoughts at this point, but I really do appreciate that we're looking at a subsequent site visit. Okay. So, um, Mr. Squire, that's basically what we're going to do then is um, I'm going to try and deputize Bill and, and Pete to work with Sue to set up a site visit with you and Luke and, and or Emily and or Natalie to go look at the site and discuss, you know, the situations that developed since the work began. And also um, I will try and reach out, send an email, unless you think it's, uh, one of you could follow up with the, the question of whether it's possible to get another, um, you were saying that the, is it the, the DEP doesn't issue an, a new, new number for a new project in the same area? Yeah, my understanding is they won't issue a, another file number if you if you submit another notice of intent for a project that's very similar in nature to you know, an existing order that's already been issued. So if you know, this, it was a single family driveway, single family house um, with you know, some, some buffer improvements. So that would, you know, would, it wouldn't be a drastically different, you know, aspect of that project if it was something completely new a new building a new entrance i think they would but my understanding is if it's two very related things they won't they won't issue one but it's you know certainly yeah so they're they're looking to encourage possible amendments is that what you're saying right. okay. yes so i just want to nail down that aspect of things because this is a new new um new experience for me on this um so okay well um i will uh basically let you speak with um, Natalie and Luke and tell them what we need to do. Will do. Great. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I appreciate it. Good night. Good. Nice night. All right. Well, that was good. Thanks for all your input guys. That's very helpful. Um, so the next uh, item under new business is um, a couple of emergency certifications. Um, now, um, <clears throat> the first one is, is about um, property at 139 Waitley Road. Um, it's a, f I believe that I probably sent you information about this, but it's, um, I think the Trezinski Farm, um, and uh, it sits next to um, property that's owned by John Pachork, the police chief, and it's, um, farm fields that were um, surrounded by swales and uh, the swales in the, I guess the July rains that we had um, silted up and um, caused water to start rising, threatening to uh, damage the, the uh, septic system for the house uh, at 139 Waitley Road. And uh, the building health commissioner 
Dick Kalashevsky went out and looked at the property and determined that there was an imminent uh, uh, another commissioner. <laughs> yeah, uh, she wants to help out. Yeah, uh, determined that this was going to be a, a problem, um, potential problem for him because it was within one foot of the groundwater uh, separation for the for the septic system, and this Mr. Trzinski is a part-time resident, so he's not always there to be able to monitor the situation. Uh, I'm not sure that that played into uh, Dick Kalashevsky's assessment, but um, so <clears throat> I went out there, made the visit, determined that yes, uh, it was reasonable to allow this work to go. Um, and uh, in the interest of not having the septic system be inundated and, and having uh, effluent leached into the surrounding water waterway, whatever. So um, I guess what basically I'm looking to do is to see if you know we can certify that action. The work was going to be done by scooping out the storm runoff and uh, I'm not sure if they were going to deposit it in a new area or just remove it. Um, so Just want to check on it's. I wanted to make sure that Sue is forwarding these things to you, or if, if I didn't forward them to you as well. So, uh, Tim is Bill Mayor PC, and yes, and I did uh, receive documentation. Um, I, I think it's it's important that we not note, uh, not make note that the property is near the chief of police's home, uh, and focus further on. Uh, um, um, that the property needed help. Um, uh, I don't uh, want yeah. any. I don't want any uh, viewpoint of it being uh, uh, any power differential or anything like that. So I just would like to make that statement, please. Sure. Um, uh, I appreciate everything else that was said. Uh, I would like to make a motion just to ratify uh, the emergency certification. Um, and I hope that the work helped the situation. Is there a second? Yeah, it's Pete Law, I'll second that. Okay, if there's no further discussion, um, I will vote aye with certification, approve the certification. Tim Hilchey. Bill Mayor, PC, aye. Pete Law, aye. Excellent, so um, without belaboring it too much more, the, I only mentioned the, the police chief in the sense that I wanted to be fully transparent, that we were aware that the police chief was there and this was not done for any reason other than that the sewer system was threatened in an adjoining property and that they were gonna have to do work from the police chief's property. So I appreciate though, Bill, your thought on that. So, so thank you. And Bill Mayor PC, thank you for uh, that further summary. And um, the final thing on under new businesses and Another emergency certification. Um, this is um, related to the earlier one that was done at Richardson's Mill Village Road area. Uh, I mean, not uh, old, old Main area. Um, we authorized work to clear out storm debris from the July storms because of flooding on Route 5. Um, apparently, very shortly thereafter, um, beavers decided that they thought that this was a good place to build and build a dam. And um, so the, the situation started to back up on itself. Um, some background on this, I, I believe that the highway department is working on a, what they call a bundled NOI, which is um, what towns are starting to look to do so that they can do regular maintenance in situations like um, this one where there's a, a recurring problem that happens year after year to maintain a certain level of uh, drainage from, from this area. So uh, I went out, I saw the, I saw the, um, the Beaver Dam and it was actually built in two tributaries where they can converge. So, um, very clever of the, the animals. Um, and 
within, they had cleared it up partially out um, the night before, but when we got back, they had done some more removal. And I, I believe what's, what's happening is that the animals are, are being captured and relocated. Um, but um, because of the problems that we just had the previous month, um, I agreed to do this, but I suggested that the highway department needs to come up with a permanent way to address these situations rather than coming back to the commission with emergency certification requests. Um, so the work I believe has been done and, and it looks like the water has subsided um, to the levels it was after the uh, previous emergency certification. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them from what I know. This be law, just a, a general question. It may not even uh, be in our jurisdiction, but uh, once a beat from my understanding, once a beaver gets kind of situated, there's a lot of other regulations that have to be complied with to take care of any beaver dam and removal and so forth. So yeah, I'm, I'm, not, all done. I, I'm not certain what was done. My understanding yeah. was that uh, <clears throat> there was. I think that Franklin Land Trust owns the land and there was communication with them about, yeah. um, you know, I'm not sure if it was this specific dam. Um, I'd have to ask uh, for clarification on that point because I don't want to, I don't want to create yeah, no. history that I don't really fully know the answer to. Um, yeah, I do believe you're correct that um, there are probably protocols for dealing with yeah. um, animals uh, outside of our purvey, but I, I, I'm interested in this bundled RDA or bundled NO, uh, yeah, NOI. Yeah, bundled NOIs. Uh, this is a topic that we're probably going to be presented with at some point, which says essentially, I, I'm again, I'm sort of speaking hypothetically, not specifically to this, but um, that there would be an NOI that would be good for, I think it's like an RDA for three years that says, you know, the, the, the town of Deerfield Highway Department has identified this problem and, it, and, and the solution to this problem is to do X on a regular basis. And so, you know, they would be asking us to um, allow them to do general maintenance work, which would have to be very specific. I would suggest that we, when we get this, we might want to get some... Uh, some help in looking at how this is done um, and whether we want to permit it or not. Um, because I don't know that, I don't know the answer to be the first time I'd ever experienced this. So, um, but I know that that's what they're thinking is. Uh, and and the, I think it's better than trying to come back to us all the time with emergency certifications. And then I'm out in the field making my decision on, a, on my own. And I don't like that. Um, I'd rather have the whole commission to weigh in on it. And yeah, those no, people again, interesting concept, but I think it does take uh, further consideration and review. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, Bill Mayor of PC, I, I very much so agree. I, I hope that it comes to fruition um, uh, in, in regards to this uh, one emergency certification. May I make a motion now to ratify? Uh, uh, this emergency certification. There's a second. Yeah, P. Law, I'd second that motion. Without further discussion, if there's no further discussion, then um, I will vote to accept that. Tim Hilchi, aye. Bill Mayor, PC, aye. P. Law, aye. Excellent. Um, okay, well. Um, there's one final thing that a uh, piece of mail that came in. Um, I believe that Sue passed this along to you. Um, I just wanted to make um, make mention that we'd received it. Um, the letter is about um, <clears throat> uh, possibly um, incomplete uh, driveway that leads from uh, Route 5 to property off Mill Village Road uh, at the near the um, dinosaur shop. And uh, so it raises, the letter raises a lot of questions and it looks like it will need a fair amount of research to 
to verify the statements that are made in it. And so um, I wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, how to proceed. One of the thoughts I had was to ask Sue Brulot to look at the records from the periods in question from, I think about 2014 to, to date uh, to see whether um, the property owners came to the Conservation Commission to ask for permission to do the work that they did there. And I think that applies also to possible tree removal. So, um, but that would be a first step. And then we'd, we'd have to see what, what Sue turns up. But uh, what are your thoughts about this, uh, either Bill or Pete? Tim, uh, Bill Mayor PC. Uh, I very much so agree with that. I, I think that we do have the um, accountability to look further. Um, okay. Yeah, this is P. Law. I, I, I've read through this a few times, and um, there are a lot of aspects here. Um, some of it probably under our jurisdiction, some probably under the, the DEP or the Highway Department. Um, but it's um, it needs further evaluation. Um, so I think the first step, if we can find out what the history is, mm -hmm. um, that gives us uh, some of the data um, to work from. I would agree with that, Tim. Um, Tim Elchi, I would also like to suggest that um, there are some, probably some legal questions that are raised in the letter too, that maybe in addition to um, once Sue does this research, uh, I think it might be wise to ask town council to look at, uh, you know, what are the legal questions? Is there in fact an, a requirement to record the permit in the registry of deeds and so forth? Um, Cause I don't know the law around this. So um, if you all think that's a good idea as well, I, I think it would be a wise thing to do. Uh, P. Law, I totally agree on the legal review for town council. Okay. What about you, Bill? Uh, yes, uh, Bill Mayor, PC. Yes, I agree that that's a prudent next step. Okay. All right. Well, then I'll follow up with the Sue about this and uh, CC or BCC you guys on the, on the email I send to her. And um, I will probably also um, CC Casey Warren and um, and uh, Lisa Mead or ask her to share this information with Lisa Mead when it comes in, um, who's the town's council. Uh, <clears throat> Excellent, well, thanks for your advice on that. It's helpful. Um, that seemed to be the last thing on our list. Does anyone has become aware of that they'd like to discuss? Uh, Tim, Bill Mayor, PC, I, I don't have anything further. Okay. Um, well, can I deputize one of you to arrange the site visit with the, with um, Natalie Blay and Luke Broussard and, and their, their group? Um, and, unless it can't be done before. I'll be back November 7th, but if, if you guys are able to start the process before then, that would be great. So Tim, it's uh, Bill Mayer, PC. Uh, my time is going to be limited within that, that period, but uh, if I could ask, please, is it not the applicant's responsibility at this point to communicate with the administration, our, the town of Deerfield to then request that site visit? I mean, we've, we've told them. Um, sure, that, that's uh, fine. Uh, I will, uh, I think we're gonna, going to need to um, communicate this in writing. So I'll send an email to Sue after we sign off tonight saying that this, need, this needs to be followed up on. And so um, make sure the applicant knows that they should be reaching out to set up a site visit. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Full-time work and family. Uh, uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, challenges. Yeah. Uh, not, not a problem. I, but I, I, but I, will, I, I will do my best to uh, attend. Uh, so. Okay. And finally, I guess, um, I think we discussed this before, but I just want to refresh my memory. Did we, did we tentatively discuss that 
because of Thanksgiving that we would schedule the next meeting on November 18, or did we? Am I conflating uh, Tim, that with uh, Bill Mayor PC? Um, uh, I think it would actually be we uh, we did not discuss it, but I, I I think it would actually be the 19th if we did. Oh no, uh, you you are correct. The 18th. Oh. Would that work for you, Pete? Uh, this P law, yeah, the 18th would be fine. Yeah. And and yes, uh, Bill Mayor PC, I could do the 18th as well. Okay, so. Uh, and um, then let's uh, schedule the next regular meeting at November 18 um, at 7 p.m. Um, and if there's nothing else, then I think we can adjourn, have a motion to adjourn the meeting. Uh, Bill Mayor, if you see, make a motion to adjourn at 8.05 p.m. Be live, second. All those in favor, Tim Hilchey, aye. Bill Mayor, if you see, aye. Be live, aye. Thanks, commissioners. Have a good night.